In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at solving quadratics by factoring. So all the examples I'm doing, they can be factored using our factoring techniques. Simple trinomials, complex trinomials, decomposition, difference of squares, GCF, uh, techniques of that nature. Okay, let's take a look at our first example here. So for the first question here, um, you always want to look to see whether there's, there's a GCF on this. These are factors of 3, this is factors of 2, so there's no GCF. So this can be solved using decomposition or charting. I'm going to go ahead and um, let's do charting on this one. So if I'm going to go ahead and do charting, we do the factors of 9 in their flips. And then likewise the factors of 4. Um, because I have that minus 12 here, because I have that minus 12, I'm going to have to add on minus signs on these for these factors. And again, if you missed the uh, explanation of charting, I'll link it in the top right-hand corner. Uh, feel free to check that out. Okay, so now we need the products to come out to be, when I take the product of the diagonal terms and add them up, I need to get a negative 12 out of here. So going through this here, you'll find these two columns work. And if you take, take note here, three times negative two is negative six, and three times negative two is obviously negative six. You add it together, you get your negative 12. So, uh, therefore, this is going to factor into, read it left to right, you get 3m minus 2 times 3m minus 2, which can be abbreviated as 3m minus 2 quantity squared. Okay, so now that we have it factored, what we have here is we have 3m minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Well, that's the same thing as saying uh, 3m minus 2 times 3m minus 2 is equal to 0. So we have two options here, either 3m minus 2 is 0 or 3m minus 2 is 0. So the only solution here is if you're solving for m, you're going to get m equals 2 thirds. So this quadratic has a single root, and that single root, i.e. where it crosses the x-axis, is at 2 thirds. Okay, so uh, moving on here. Uh, for the next question, we have a simple trinomial. So I need to think of two numbers whose product is 15 and whose sum is 8. Well, those two numbers are 5 and 3, right? Those two numbers here are going to be 5 and 3. So uh, this will factor into y plus 5 times y plus 3, and that's equal to 0. And again, the only way this is going to be 0, either y plus 5 is 0 or y plus 3 is 0, i.e., either y is negative 5 or y is negative 3. So this quadratic has two roots, one at negative 3 and one at negative 5. Okay, continuing on here, uh, this next question is going to be a difference of squares question. So you have to write these as products of 2, right? Powers of 2. So 2c is the base, 2c squared. It's going to be 4c squared. And 7 to the power of 2 is your 49. Now I can apply my difference of squares formula. And again, the only way you can multiply these two numbers together and get an answer of 0 is one of these has to be 0. And solving for c here, I get 7 over 2 and negative 7 over 2. So this quadratic has two roots, one at 7 over 2 and one at negative 7 over 2. Okay, next question here, if you take a look. Uh, leading coefficient is a 2, but 7's prime, 15 has no 2's in it. I can't factor a 2 out of here. So this is going to be a question um, where you're factoring using decomposition or charting. I'm going to go ahead and do decomposition on this one. So if I'm going to solve this using decomposition, it's going to be 2 times negative 15. So that's going to be negative 30 is my product, product, and my sum here is negative 7. So I need to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 30 and add to be negative 7. Uh, well, those two numbers are negative 10 and 3. So therefore, I can replace the minus 7x with a negative 10x plus 3x minus 15 is 0. And now I can GCF. Uh, these first two terms with the 2x, leaving me with x minus 5. And likewise, I can GCF out a 3, also leaving me with an x minus 5. And now, as we've seen before, you can GCF out that common term. And now we have factored, now we have factored this expression using decomposition. So now the only way that this can be 0 is either x minus 5 is 0 or 2x plus 3 is 0 which means that either x is 5 
or x is negative 3 over 2. So this quadratic has two roots, one at 5 and the other at negative 3 over 2. Okay, so continuing on here, um, for number 5 here, we actually have a GCF. I can factor a 2 out of here. Leave me with t squared minus 12t plus 36 is 0. All right, so we're left with a simple trinomial inside. We need to think of two numbers whose product is positive 36, but the sum is negative 12. And those two numbers are negative 6 and negative 6. So this is going to factor into 2. t minus 6 times t minus 6 is 0. Well, the only way that's going to happen is either t minus 6 equals 0 or t minus 6 equals 0, which means that t is 6, or obviously here you have the same thing, t is 6. So this quadratic has a single root at 6. Okay, moving on to example 6 here. We have a quadratic. This is going to be a difference of squares question. So if I want to factor this, I have to express this as a power of 2. So that would be 5m quantity squared minus 6 squared, in which case this will factor into 5m minus 6 and 5m plus 6. So the only way this is going to come out to be 0 is either 5m minus 6 is 0 or 5m plus 6 is 0, in which case m is 6 over 5 or m is negative 6 over 5. So this quadratic has two roots, one at 6 fifths and the other at negative 6 fifths. Okay, moving on to example 7. Now this is a quadratic, but it's kind of all moved around and we have to kind of fix it up. So to see what we have here, we have to distribute this 2 into the binomial, distribute the 5 into the binomial, in which case we get 2m squared plus 6m equals 15 plus 5m. Bring everything to one side so we can see what type of quadratic that we do have and then see what type of factoring technique we can employ. Collect our like terms. And now we can see we're back to a more standard question that we would have seen in the previous six examples. I have a complex trinomial. It's not as simple. I'm going to have to factor this using charting or decomposition. Uh, let's do decomposition on this. So the product, product is going to be 2 times negative 5 negative 30, and the sum is going to be 1. So those two numbers are 6 and negative 5. So I can get rid of this positive m and change it to a 6m minus 5m. And then I can do factor by grouping on these. Now I can factor out that minus 5, and I'm left with an m plus 3. And now what I have here is I have a common factor of m plus 3 to take out. And the only way this is going to be 0 here, either m plus 3 is 0 or 2m minus 5 is 0, in which case m is negative 3 or m is 5 over 2. So this quadratic, with the amount of work we had to do here, um, you'll see here the original quadratic, this is what we started off with. We expanded everything out, brought everything to one side, ended up with a quadratic um, in sort of standard form. We could kind of see what it looks like. We factored using decomposition, and we found the two roots are negative 3 and 5 over 2. All right, let's take a look here at the last question here. So again, this is not a quadratic, um, but I want to show you guys, I can still factor this using a difference of squares technique. So what I need to do is write x to the power of 4 as a power of 2. Well, I can write that as x squared squared or x squared to the power of 2. Because when you have power to a power, you multiply. And likewise, I can write this as 4 squared like we've been doing. So now what happens here is this is my x and this is my y. So if I do my difference of squares formula here, we're going to get x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 4 equals 0. Now what I have here is inside here, I have another difference of squares sitting here. So I can rewrite this as x squared minus 2 squared times x squared plus 4 equals 0. Notice the word difference meets subtraction. This is not a difference of squares, so our, my formula does not apply to the right-hand side term. Now, on the left-hand side, though, this will factor into x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x squared plus 4 is 0. So now we have three terms, this time instead of 2, whose product is 0. So here's the options. Either x minus 2 is 0, 
x plus 2 is 0, or x squared plus 4 is 0. So for the first one, that's obvious. Okay, x is 2. And the second one, also obvious. Okay, x is minus 2. That means that this, it's not a quadratic, but this degree 4 polynomial, degree 4 power 4 polynomial, has roots at 2 and negative 2. In addition to that, looking at this here, I want to know whether this is 0. This is never going to be 0. The reason for that is if you take a look at the argument here, x squared, just x squared on its own, that expression will always be greater than or equal to 0. It can be 0, but no matter what, it'll never be negative because you're squaring that term. It'll always be positive. So the smallest that x squared can be is 0. So then I'm taking something that is at least at the smallest it can be is 0, and then I'm adding 4 to that. Because I'm adding 4 to that, there's no way that this can ever be 0. So this is not possible. So therefore, for our final question, this degree 4 polynomial has roots at 2 and negative 2. Okay, that concludes um, factoring quadratics uh, and using that to solve. So in this case here, we've got several techniques we've done here. So check them out. You've got your differences squares. You've got your uh, decomposition, your GCF, and then uh, simple trinomials using product sum. Uh, using all of this to solving quadratics by factoring. Thank you.